So think about what, we what are we teaching? We are teaching how to manage challenging behaviour. What are you faced with? Some participants who are challenging. So let's think about the crisis development model. What behaviour level are they displaying? Actually, what behaviour level are we displaying? Let's start thinking mapper. Okay, so think mapper. we can influence people as instructors mm -hmm. is even in our training um, if when we do situational application um, we're holding on to mark but somebody talks to him in a really nice way work with us mark come on don't worry about things everything's gonna be alright then certainly what I've done and I've seen other instructors say afterwards what you did was lovely that was really really nice because what you typically get is calm down mark calm down well that's not going to solve anything is it so what I certainly do, and I've seen other instructors do it, is when people say other things that mean that, but say it in a lovely way, I'll take them to one side after and say, that was really lovely what you did. Any physical limitations, any underlying health conditions that people have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's obviously communicated to the staff yeah. as well, because it's really Definitely. important we don't try and do things with people that are natural for them, okay? Based on individual levels of mobility, etc. Mm. Okay. Mm. Lovely. So, well done again, folks. So, really, really good problem solving there. Uh, okay. Yeah, she's swinging her arm around. Moving to a next level, aren't we? Yeah, yeah and I think obviously. Disarm yeah. is not something mm -hmm. that we. So we've got to think about, I suppose, yeah, the risk of going in versus the risk of not yeah. going in. Yeah. Uh, duty of care and safety for everyone. But it's, it's the so we've got some desirable outcomes, that's what we'd like to achieve from this. Uh, situational application, as you said, transfer into the workplace environment, really, really important. Achieve a different perspective, just <coughs> delve into it a little bit deeper than perhaps you have chance to ordinarily. The deeper we can go is only in an hour, but at least it's an opportunity for you to do that here with us today. Okay? The additional tools for the workplace, that's something that we hope you'll be able to take back and actually use in the workplace when you're considering the verbal escalation continuum. Uh, because at the moment the thoughts are it's probably just theoretical, it's a model, it's something that we talk about in the programme, but then what do people do with it when they go back to the workplace? And we've got some tools to assist you in that process if you feel that that's your responsibility, but you might tell other people about it and they might be able to use it. So we saw some release. What was the risk behaviours? He was pushing. Was yeah, intimidation, isn't it? He was intimidating her, wasn't he? Intimidating yeah. and the build-up, yeah. yeah. That would be defensive intimidation. Yes. And then there's a hitting. Yeah, somebody that knows you well. Um, somebody that knows how to get under your skin. Um, and get the reaction that, that they are looking for. Um, and I always uh, default to thinking about my mum when I think about personal button pushing. As a 35 year old woman, um, she still has the ability to influence my behaviour to that of a stroppy 15 year old teenager. Um, because she knows how to push my buttons. Um, but people that we work with on a regular basis, colleagues we work with on a regular basis, they equally can start to do the same. Uh, just to finish off, and we'd like to just say thank you very much for your participation, um, and we hope you actually got something from yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. You're doing a fabulous job.